An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. Hello? What do you mean, have I checked the emails? No, stupid, it's 6 o'clock. What? What do you mean we need to replace three team members? Alright, alright, hang on. What the fuck, dude? What the actual fuck? What? Are you fucking kidding me? I swear to god, this team is gonna be the death of me. So, this is a fun little thing to wake up to. Apparently, there was a brawl that took place be with my team after they went to celebrate our previous win. Yay! So, it looks like Puff the Furfru and Parker the Araquanid got into a heated fight at a freaking bar next to our facility. And in the course of the fight, Lola tried to break it up, play Peacemaker, and got thrown through a goddamn window. So, yay! This is definitely not what I was expecting when I woke up in the morning. So, after a few days of getting things resolved and trying to figure out what the hell's going on, I end up finding out that our owners have actually sent a little bit of info. They sent a statement. And this is what they sent out. And I have to be honest, this is definitely not helping our case here. We are deeply saddened and troubled by the incident that occurred this past weekend. When we formed this team, it was with the goal of having a friendly atmosphere and an exciting experience for battlers and fans alike. As a result of this incident, Puff and Parker were officially removed from the team indefinitely. Good, so we have two team members that are no longer with us permanently, thanks to them not being able to control their rage. I hate these- I hate this stuff. I hate this job. And it looks like that Lola has also decided that she wants to recover and basically leave the team as well. Honestly, I do not blame her after this. And thankfully, they're going to cover the expenses for the recovery as well as the damage to the tavern. So that's good. I have to give props to our owners, Grant and Jean Gardy. They're good for that, that they're at least willing to acknowledge there is a problem in this team. God knows there are a few other sports teams out there that refuse to pull this shit off. But, you know, it doesn't change the fact that now we are down three mons. So, first off, Lola was the innocent in all of this, so she's the first to be discussed. And I'm actually really disappointed that she's the one going, because she was actually a pretty solid Pokemon and a really good fairy type. With 12 points in value, however, we did have access to pick up something else, someone else, and we'll get to that later. But she did really good, she played four of the matches, and she did fairly well in that regard, so... I'm happy to see that. And then we have Parker, who also played four matches, and while his record isn't exactly amazing, he did do fairly well in general. And then we have Puff, who only played in one game, basically went even on it, and to be honest, I don't know. I feel like Furfru probably wasn't going to be a top contender on our team either way, but still, this sucks. But now, we have to go ahead and discuss our pickups, because we do need to pick up at least two team members in order to keep our roster at the necessary number. So first off, we actually picked up an old friend of mine from the previous season. Ecclesia Artogicus has come back to us. Apparently, she was not happy with her previous team, she decided to drop, and she actually was available for us to sign her on. And honestly, I'm very happy about this. Ecclesia was our MVP back in the Miami Overheat, so I am really happy to see her back here again. She did have one stipulation to it, which we did end up talking with someone else on our team, and they agreed to it, so 
we're gonna go ahead and discuss that in a little while. But the big thing is Togekiss is back on our team. Hopefully she can help keep our team in the good for the next three weeks. And then we needed to pick up one more team member. And this one is actually a Pokemon that I've never used in a draft league before. And in fact, I don't think I've ever used it in a competitive setting, period. But we have decided to pick up Wart the Seismitoad. He is a fairly solid Pokemon in general. Water ground typing along with Water Absorb as a potential ability is really strong. There's a pretty good level of defensive bulk to Seismitoad as well. And also having access to things like Stealth Rock is pretty good. So all in all, Seismitoad is a very well-rounded pickup for us. Now we move on to the actual meat and potatoes of the battle today. We are facing off against Omnic Fenrir and the Minnesota Mamoswine. Fenrir is actually one of the mods of our division, and on top of that, Fenrir was actually my first opponent last season, and if I remember correctly, I believe Fenrir ended up beating us, I think fairly handily. I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering that specifically. But that's in the past, and today is a new day. They are currently 3-3 with a minus one differential, so still a little bit better off than we are with our 2-4 and minus three, but I think we have a decent chance. That being said, it's not gonna be easy when you look at Fenrir's team here. Holy hell, this is going to be a really powerful team. We see Walking Wake, which has been making waves big time in the community as a very strong offensive Pokemon. Lando's T is basically no surprise to anyone who has played in Smogon or competitive in general. Slitherwing is here in a pretty powerful bug and fighting type Pokemon. And honestly, between him, Walking Wake, and Rotom Heat, I could see the potential of a uh, Sun Team forming, so we'll have to be careful there. Jirachi is there, who we used in a previous season before. And I know full well Jirachi is a really strong Pokemon overall. So definitely going to have to be careful there. Grimmsnarl is there, and it's a pretty defensive Pokemon, as well as having access to Prankster, which makes it very terrifying. And then, as I said before, Rotom Heat is here, so pretty bulky Pokemon in general. Pretty good in terms of setting up Sun for the rest of the team, and also a pretty good pivot. And then we have Hisuian Quillfish, which admittedly I'm not too, uh, too familiar with. All I know is that it's apparently a dark type. And we're going to find out if that ends up biting me in the ass later. And then we see Superior, who is kind of a one-trick pony. But honestly, when you have Contrary and Leaf Storm, do you really need anything else? And then they have Aerodactyl, who is one of their two um, Terra Captains, the other being Lando. Aerodactyl is terrifying with its base 130 speed, and in fact, it actually ties our fastest Pokemon speed for speed. So, assuming Arrow is Scarf, that means that it's probably going to outspeed most of our team and be a terrifying presence. And then rounding out the team, we have Glaceon and Spidops, both of whom I don't think are necessarily big threats, but they do have their niche here and there and could potentially be a problem. That all said, looking at the team, I think these are going to be the Pokemon they're bringing here. I expect it to be the Sun Team, more or less, so I kind of expect Walking Wake and Rotom to come in. Lando is definitely going to prob- I'm, if I'm definitely expecting Lando to come in because it's actually been in most of their battles so far. And Landorus in general is just a really big Pokemon to deal with. It's very bulky when it wants to be, it's very offensive when it wants to be, and having access to Intimidate is a pain in the ass. And then Jirachi, I'm expecting, just because of the fact that it's a really strong defensive Pokemon, as well as a really good offensive att attacker. And Serene Grace makes a lot of things a pain in the ass to tolerate. So, I don't expect him to necessarily go straight for Flinch Axe, but you never know. And then Grimmsnarl and Superior are here just to round it out, I'm guessing, but this is the six that I'm expecting to see. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Slitherwing in replace of Superior, perhaps, but I'm feeling fairly confident here. So, with that being said, this is the team I'm bringing, and let me tell you, this is going to be interesting. So, first things first, we have Ecclesia front and center, 
rocking a calm nature with leftovers with soft boil, dazzling gleam, air slash, and flamethrower. Basically, her goal is going to be to try to survive as long as possible, to deal as much damage as humanly possible. And, honestly, between Dazzling Gleam, Air Slash, and Flamethrower, that little bit of Serene Grace we have access to could potentially get a burn or a flinch off, which can be pretty helpful. And it's just general coverage to help kind of whittle things down for one of our other mods to take out. So, definitely going to see how that fares out. And then we have Coco, the Tapu Coco, with more or less a bit of a, a general strut that we've seen lately. Timid Nature with U-Turn, Light Screen, Reflect, and Thunderbolt holding the Light Clay. Basically, he's coming in to set up the Electric Terrain for the next two Pokemon to come in and finish things off. And now we have our main change. Iron Jugulus is still here. However, this is not the same Iron Jugulus as usual. It was decided that Triclyde himself was feeling a little uninterested in continuing. However, he did have a friend that was willing to step in. And as it happens, this was actually the friend that Ecclesia wanted to bring in as well. So say hello to her best friend, Albaz. Basically, he's going to do the same thing that Triclyde did. However, we've got a nice little pair going on that are very friendly with each other. And quite frankly, are going to work together to kick some ass. So we see the Timid Nature with the Assault Vest. With Charge Beam, Flamethrower, Air Slash, and Knock Off. Knockoff being there mostly because, number one, dark type attacks aren't really going to be super helpful here. But number two, knockoff gives us an option to kind of get rid of a couple of items, maybe get a, get a couple leftovers or a convenient choice scarf knocked away on a switch in. So, kind of useful there. And the assault vest kind of gives it a little extra bulk to work with as well. And then charge beam is there to kind of helpfully, hopefully get a special attack buff because with Cork Drive the way it is, uh, Albaz is going to get a speed buff coming in on the electric terrain. So that can hopefully help out here. And then we have Ray the Halucha, who is basically your standard fare. Acrobatics, Iron Head, Fire Punch, Sword Stance, Adamant Nature, 96 speed, which is just fast enough to double up and outspeed a Choice Scarfed Aerodactyl, which in turn means that we could actually throw the remaining HP uh, EVs into HP to give him the most bulk possible, as well as maxing out his attack stat. And then we have Luna, our Cresselia, with Leftovers, with Calm Mind, Ice Beam, Moon Blast, and Protect. Ice Beam is there mostly to deal with potentially Landorus, and honestly, Ice Beam in general can deal a little bit of damage here and there to the other Pokemon. It's not going to be the most effective, but I'd rather have one option or two options available to deal with Lando if Lando ends up not being the Terra Captain, which admittedly this next one is going to be a heat choice specifically under the assumption that he ends up tearing into Aerodactyl instead of Lando. But if that happens and Lando does not, Lando either comes in to get, uh, basically comes in on a presumed safe switch or something along those lines, Heatran can actually be a pain. So Helios is here with max special attack, max speed, flame charge, flamethrower, dragon pulse, and terra blast. But as you can see, Helios is not terra type fire, she is terra type water. Basically, unless Lando T A terras into a different type, or B goes full HP, full special defense. A Terra Blast Water Gem boosted water type attack actually will one shot from full health. I do not expect that to work out, but if it does, this may honestly be the funniest goddamn thing ever. And let's be real, we have to win all three weeks in order to even have a chance at playoffs, and I think based off of our records with everyone else so far, I think playoffs are out of there anyway, so fuck it. We ball. So, with that being said, everyone, time to go into the battle. Let's see how things fare. We'll get, we'll see you inside the stadium.
All right, we are live, and what the hell is this? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, actually, I'm... I'm actually kind of close, what the fuck? Grimmsnarl, Rotom, Walking Wake, Superior, Lando. The only thing, wow. Wait, is the only thing I got wrong here Glaceon instead of Jirachi? Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. That's actually important to pay attention to. Okay, so... No Aerodactyl either, actually. Wait a minute. Hold up. That's big. Oh my god, that's actually huge. Okay. Okay. So the bad news is that means that Lando is more than likely going to be the going to Terra, which kind of renders Helios a little worse, but that's not the worst thing in the world because Terra water still actually can fuck up Rotom pretty good, and if he's expecting something like that, it won't be as bad. Okay. I don't see... So I see Lando potentially starting off for ice, or not ice, starting off for... Shit, what's it called? Starting off for potentially, um... Stealth Rock? I could see that being a potential thing. Um... So, you know what? I actually kind of want to... Part of me wants to start with Coco and just U-turn, but I'm scared that he's going to be Scarfed. And if he's Scarfed, then we're in trouble. You know what? Thinking about it, I think we're going to actually start with Luna. There's the Landro. Lando, okay. Lando might go for U-turn. He's either going to go for Stealth Rock, or he's going to go for U-turn. He might go for a knockoff, but I don't think that's likely. Also, I just realized I forgot to change the terror on everyone to, uh, to normal. Whoops. Oh, well. As long as we remember not to choose anyone except Helios, we should be fine. Um... I kind of want to just protect Scout and see what he's doing. U-turn. Okay. And he didn't tear it right away, so that means that he's probably going to hide that for a bit. So... We're gonna call mine. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna call mine. Let him, let him get a little damage off, but we're gonna call mine. We're gonna heal a little bit. And we're going to have a, a nice little bit of setup to try to deal some damage. So, Glaceon. I'm curious as to what the hell Glaceon is going to do. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's set one to one. Glaceon. It could be Calm Mind. It could be Spec. Doesn't look like it's gonna matter too much. I say we just go for Moonblast. Yawn. Oh, interesting. Okay. And Moonblast did about 26%, which is pretty much on par with a Calm Mind variant. Okay. Let's actually switch. Yeah, we're going to switch into Coco. I don't know what he's going to do, but... Switching into Rotom. Okay. That's actually kind of important. What is Rotom going to do? He might go for a Volt Switch. 
Well, if he goes for Volt Switch, there's nothing I can stop it, so... We're gonna reflect. Defog. Oh. Okay. That's a pain in the ass. I feel like... Okay. Because of the fact that he knows that I'm aware that he's got Defog now, I don't think I'm gonna... I think he's expecting me to just U-turn or something, because... If we go for Reflect again, and he Defogs again, it's whatever. So, but... I'd like to get this set up now. And he Volt Switches. Okay. This is okay, because now Reflect is up, and he has to come back in to Defog again. question now becomes, who is he switching into? Superior. Okay. That's actually a problem. We're gonna U-turn. Okay, that does a lot. And honestly, I kind of feel like Helios is the right choice. Helios is a good choice here. Substitute, huh? Okay. You know what? We're gonna flame charge. Oh! Glare, huh? Okay. I see you. Now we're just... Yeah, we're just gonna go straight for the flamethrower, because that's not gonna do a lot here. Okay. Blair, Thief Storm. There's Lando. I really wish I had thought about that. Okay. Here's our chance. We're gonna Terra, and we're gonna Terra Blast. Assuming he does not, and I'm, I repeat this, assuming he does not Terra right now, this should one-shot him. Don't be paralyzed. Fuck yes! Fuck yes! <laughs> I can't believe that worked. Oh my god, Helios, you just earned MVP no matter what. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't even care if we lose now. That was the best fucking moment ever. That was, I think that might be the, my favorite moment of the season hands down. And now we're gonna flamethrower. He's gonna freeze dry and... oh, right. Okay, that was my bad. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's okay, though. That's okay. Gotta... Gotta take a moment. Gotta chill. Okay. I... let's see. He can't yawn. And I don't think he's going to freeze dry. We're going to go for a U-turn. I think he's going to switch into Rotom again. There's the Rotom. Okay. The downside to this is the fact that, unfortunately, Ray actually has nothing to really deal with Rotom, which is a problem. Oh, actually, come to think of it, aside from Helios, I don't really have anything to deal with it, period. Oh, shit, that was actually a really bad mistake on my part. Um, okay, now we have to think. I kind of want to switch into Albaz and just go straight knockoff. Yeah, let's do that. The Reflect disappears, he might, I feel like he might, he's either going to Volt Switch to go for damage, or he's going to, we're definitely faster, so I kind of want to get the knockoff going, so let's do that. Knockoff, takes off the heavy duty boots, okay. So the Defog is gone, that's fine. 
question now is what what deals the most damage to 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 the Rotom? Let's assume specially defensive, worst case scenario here. Let's see, it said knockoff does 24 to 28. It did less. So it's gonna be a bit more physically defensive, but that's fine. Actually, if it's more physically defensive, Okay, yeah. If it's physically defensive, I'm gonna assume no special defense. Unfortunately, the rest of the moveset actually doesn't do enough to warrant it. It's probably gonna Volt Switch, so... We're gonna switch back into Coco. If he full switches, oh, he pain splits. Interesting. Um, all right, let's see what can Coco actually do a lot here. Thunderbolt does not do a lot at all. Fuck. So he's got full switch, pain split, defog. He might overheat. He might have overheat. We're gonna set the light screen up just in case. Will-O-Wisp. Okay. Good news, that means no fire attacks. Bad news, this is still a potential problem. Boy, I really just realized how fucked I am on against Rotom. This is actually a big problem here. Uh. And I feel like this is probably his time to defog. Let's... Let's hit Thunderbolt. Let's see how much this does. Okay, that actually does a decent chunk. So I'm not as concerned in that regard because... All right, we're gonna light the screen. He's pain splitting, and it is dealing a little bit, but not much. Let's try Thunderbolt again, see what happens. Okay, 21% still, so that's actually pretty solid. I kind of feel like just spamming Thunderbolt, basically, because This, this this is going to be the best way to deal with Rotom, basically. Okay. And then we just U-turn. It's... Well, actually, do we want to U... Yeah, we want to U-turn. Because Superior is not going to take a lot from here, but it's the best chance we get. Unfortunately, there's not really a lot I can to stop this. Well, okay, this actually stops Superior from getting access to a, uh, what's it called? To a substitute, so that's not too bad. The only downside is someone's about to get glared, I think. Which is kind of a problem. We're gonna switch into Ecclesia. We're gonna let her. Okay, Giga Drain. That's not a big deal. And if she gets. Uh, and if. She, even if she ends up getting flared, it's no big deal. We'll just Air Slash. Because Flamethrower does nothing here. There's the Glaceon. Okay. That actually did kind of a lot. Hold up. 
Glaceon. Assuming the Calm Mind variant. Flamethrower does 50 to 59. We have a chance to kill it. Protect. Scouted it out. Son of a bitch. That was smart. And... Okay. I mean, Freeze Dry could do a lot, a decent chunk, but Flamethrower is our best pet, and I think we outspeed. Unless they... Unless Fenrir actually invested in speed, we should be faster. And realistically speaking, I unless he's switching in the... Oh, okay. There's the Rotom. Rotom's gonna be faster. The question is, does he want... He's gonna paint split. He's gonna paint split, absolutely. We're gonna switch into Coco. I knew it! And now we're gonna thunder. Okay, question. Do we thunderbolt or do we go straight for the We Thunderbolt. We Thunderbolt because we get I believe we'll get one more turn of burn. And we U-turn, because we're going to be faster. He does not have Protect, and this will spare us one turn. And Rotom is weak enough that realistically, I don't think we have to worry anymore. I think this might be a chance for Halucha to sweep. Walking Wake... I mean, Walking Wake is going to be able to... Okay, there's Grim Snarl. Okay, let's see what Grim Snarl can do. Assuming screens. Iron Head does a lot. Yeah, fuck it, we go Iron Head. Trick. Oh, that's a problem. Well, okay, that's okay. We sword stance and we're still okay. Because we're basically even at that point. Because with a plus one defense, I think we're okay. Okay, so we're still minus one. There's walking weight. Special attack. Okay. This is going to be a potential problem. But Walking Wake is still slower. <gasps> oh no! Wait a minute, he's faster! The Flame Orb means that we don't have a... Uh, uh, unburden anymore. Shit! Okay. Oh, that's actually a big problem for us. And we don't have a way to get rid of that item, either, because I highly doubt Grim Snarl's going to trick again. Okay, we go Acrobatics. That was a crit. I don't think that really mattered. Okay, we set up Coco. Okay, we're going to set up light screen. Wait. Do we want to go... <sighs> okay, here's my thought. If we go light screen, that gives a little bolt. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. If we go Thunderbolt... Eh, actually no, because if we go Thunderbolt, there's a very good chance that we're going to die anyway. Because at worst, it, I mean, at best, it kills Rotom. At worst, it does it, and then we're screwed. Um, this actually is going to be a big problem. This, is, let's okay. Let's see what Walking Wake will do. And it doesn't have choice specs because we know it used its warp drive. Uh, Coco. 
Thunderbolt does about 62%. Let's go for it. Okay, I did not realize it had Aqua Jet. Okay, I do not necessarily like this, but we have to go this way. Albaz comes in, we're gonna deal as, basically Albaz, Albaz is now going to deal as much damage as humanly possible to everything. Okay. This is stressful. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Charge Beam does very little. Air Slash could do about half. Assuming we do Charge Beam and it goes that 31. There is a chance we could kill. Not a high chance. 18. Plus 60, so 78 versus 71. So, okay, so the chances of us killing are pretty much not happening. But, if we go double air slash. Okay, we're gonna go... Let's go Charge Beam. Dragon Pulse did a lot, that's fine. And now we're just gonna Air Slash and pray. If, he get, if we get the flinch, then that'll be, worth, that'll be well worth it. We do not. Unfortunately, that also means that Aqua Jet is about to commit bloody murder. There's not really anything we can do about that. Jugulus does have potential use still. 346. Yeah, actually. So. Let's switch into Luna. Okay. How do we want to deal with this, specifically, is the question. If we Moonblast... Moonblast will take out pretty much... I think Moonblast will deal with anything except Glaceon and Rotom. And even then, Rotom, I think two Moonblasts can kill. Let's go for it. Dragon Pulse did a decent bit. That's not too bad. Okay, Walking Wake is down. This is, this is the big one. The question is, is Rotom gonna go for Pain Split? Is he gonna go for Pain Split or is he gonna go for Full Switch? Let's protect and see. Let's see what he wants to do. Pain Split, okay. If we switch to Albat, Pain Split's not going to do a lot. In fact, I think he might actually give us help. Let's switch into Albaz. Okay, that actually helps us. Not a big boost, but it's something. And... Now, before we make this stupid choice... Uh, we know Rotom is more physically defensive. Seven to eight, that's still not enough. Um, we would have to assume it's bold. Charge Beam does not do enough. Flamethrower, Flamethrower, Air Slash. Uh, knockoff does not do anything, right? 14 to 17. Actually, fuck it, we go Knockoff, because he's got, what, two? Yeah, he's got two choices. Knock off. Okay. Okay. This is actually really scary now. Because. Well, specifically, I don't know what else Grimmsnarl is going to try to do. But. 
man, I feel like Ecclesia has a chance to finish up here. The question is, will we actually be able to do that? That's the big one. There's the Glaceon. Okay. We're faster. If we... Flamethrower should do enough damage to matter. Let's do it. Protect. Okay. That's fine. And with leftovers, that's a slight concern. Uh, let me double check, though. Glaceon. Assuming Cold Mindset. 58 to 69. We should have a good chance of killing. Let's Flamethrower. If he wants to go double protect, then go double protect. That's fine to guarantee his survival. But either way, they're going to eat a flamethrower on someone. It'd be funny if Glaceon actually had quick attack. Though I don't think it'd be enough to take us out, but it would actually be a really funny bit of tech. Okay. Down to 29. And I say we go Air Slash. If he parting shots, he parting shots, but that's fine. Grim Snarl is low. Glaceon is kind of mid health, but we have three mons to Glaceon at that point. So I think we have a chance to still win. There's the parting shot. Oh wait, we're, oh shit, we're immune. I forgot about that. I forgot they changed the dark type to not count. Oh my god. I, f I completely forgot that Dark Types are immune to prankster moves. I forgot. Okay, I think we're good. I'm pretty sure we're good now. There's the Protect. So yeah, it's... Barring a crit, Glaceon is definitely going to live this, but that's okay. There's a hit. There's the freeze dry. Albaz, you did an incredible job. Thank you for your service. And now, 251. I'm pretty sure Ecclesia just comes in, takes a hit, and dies to, and kills flame, with Flamethrower. I'm pretty sure that's GG. I'm pretty sure. Yep, that's GG. Oh my god, I cannot believe we actually won that. I'm I'm legitimately surprised we won that. I really thought Rotom was gonna wall us off right there. Holy shit. Okay. Let me take a minute to collect myself, and then we're gonna go into the post-game, so stay tuned. Man, oh man. That may have been one of that may have been one of both the most exciting and most stressful matches I've ever been through. I'm excited as all hell that that Heatran actually got to pull off her spice. I'm also very much shocked that we actually managed to win that, considering the fact that Rotom pretty much walled out everyone else for the longest time. So, how we managed to sneak off with a 2-0 win, I will never understand. And especially because we looked into it after the fact, and yeah, it turns out that that actually made a big impact with the walking with the uh, Heatran. Because as it turns out, assuming no HP and no special defense investment on Landorus, which is what Fenrir did, and the Assault Vest, which it turns out, yeah, that's actually what Land OT had. Yeah, it turned out that was actually a 6.8 or 1 in 16 chance, effectively, uh, or, yeah, I think it's like a 1 in 16 or 1 in 14, one or the other. Basically, it was a 1 in 14 chance to one shot from full health. Yeah. So... We lucked the fuck out on that one. And honestly, as much as I want to give the MVP to, t to Heatran for that alone, unfortunately, I really can't. Because the weekly MVP is really... Once again, Iron Jugulus. However, this time it's Albaz taking the spotlight instead of Triclide. And basically, 
Honestly, Albaz has it for pretty much the same reasons that Triclite had it last time. They had two knockouts in this battle, as well as getting Glaceon down low enough for Togekiss to clean up at the end, because Togekiss was able to survive a freeze dry to finish it off. And on top of that, Albaz also took two Dragon Pulses from Walking Wake, which is in no small part a huge feat, and was able to actually deal enough damage to it so that way Cresselia was able to finish it off with a Moonblast. So, all in all, Albaz actually got a lot of utility in this match, even though, as far as I'm aware, he didn't actually get to make much use of the electric terrain at all, to be honest, so... That's actually really shocking. So, with all that being said, now we look forward to next week. And with only two weeks left of the season, once again, we have to win both of them to even have a chance to go to the playoffs, so we'll have to see. But next week, we are facing off against the Dashing Greninjas and their coach, Copy Ninja. Which, right now, they are at a 2-4 and four record with a minus 4 differential. That is because they have yet to actually complete their battle for this week as of the time of this recording. So we'll see how that pans out later. But, honestly, their team is a little scary. They've got, I believe they're the team that has the Chien Pao on the roster, which is a hella horrifying mon to deal with and if i remember correctly i believe it is also one of their terror captains which is even more of a horrifying concept to deal with so yeah we're gonna have to figure that out so with that being said we'll catch you guys next week we'll come up with something and we'll see how things fare so until then guys have a great night